Hey there everyone, Hitesh here back again with another video. In this video, I want to answer five important questions regarding Python. Now, when you're getting started as a beginner in Python, these are the five, five most common questions that usually people get in their mind uh, while getting started Python as their first programming language. So let's answer all of them. Now, before we get started with this video, I would like to mention one important point here that I will not be mentioning the pros and cons of Python here. I am expecting that you have already set up your mind that hey Python is going to be my language of choice and I'm gonna just get started with this. This video is not about telling you that Python is best or is it suitable for that particular stuff or that particular stuff. It's not about that. It's just about answering these important questions and rather just getting around with the Q&A. So let's get started here. <music> The very first question that is being asked to me is what's your favorite IDE or editor for Python? Now Python is a very versatile language and it can work on with variety of editors as well as IDE. Now editor is something which is less featured and IDE is something which is much more featured and comes up with a lot of things. Now Python being a great programming language you can directly get started uh, with the Python either in Sublime Text or Atom. Yes, that's completely possible and in fact I do write a lot of my codes in that editor as well. Now in case you want something more bigger and much more advanced than just these plain editors like Sublime Text or Atom, you can try out either Eclipse or PyCharm. Now in the past I used to be a big fan of Eclipse and I used to have installed these PyDev updates and dependencies and could have been working with that. It, it really works like a charm but nowadays PyCharm is there and I use PyCharm uh, for all of my Python project if I do so. I am not much involved in Python projects nowadays but still I'm a big fan of PyCharm and I, I highly recommend to check that out at least once before you get started with that. The next question is interesting one. It says uh, should we have knowledge on Python previous version? That's a very classic question and it's okay to have this question because a lot of people have this question. Now because of a lot of confusion between Python 2.x and 3.x it's pretty common to see around and uh, people just think and assume that uh, before learning Python 3.x or whatever that is running up right now we should have a knowledge of Py Python 2.x something. Now I want to take you a little bit on to the history lesson here before we answer this question. Now in the early days the Python 2 was just only the language and uh, it was just one language that was going on around. There was not two languages as of now which is Python 2 and 3 and in case you didn't know that yes they are two different languages almost same name but a lot of drastic differences are there. So in the early days it was just Python 2 and everybody was quite happy there were tons of libraries and everything were going on in Python 2. But then the founder of the Python realized that it's not truly an object oriented language so I need to remodify this language and have to start from the ground scratch and therefore he decided that I will leave the path of going on with the Python 2 I'll start with the Python 3 which is going to be rewritten entirely from the scratch. Now, although it was written almost from the scratch, but it is not a drastic difference from Python 2 to Python 3. Yes, there are some subtle changes and Python 3 is far more object-oriented and truly an object-oriented language compared to Python 2. So these are completely different and I would recommend right now you can directly get started with Python 3. You should not have a knowledge of Python 2. Although if you do have, it won't certainly hurt you. Uh, but right now there is no such need of going into Python 2. You can directly get started with Python 3. It used to be a time when uh, most of the libraries and modules were not being available on Python 3. So you had to go with the Python 2. But now it's completely stable and completely dependable. You can directly get started with Python 3. On a whole story, short notice here. Get started with Python 3. Don't worry about anything. The next question is again a classic one and is interesting as well. It says, what is supporting language that we should know before learning Python? Now, uh, this is a common question and uh, it floats around quite a lot. To learn Python, you don't need any prior programming experience. Python is in itself a standalone language and it is not at all a dependent language. In fact, no language is dependent on any other as well. Uh, for example, if you want to learn Java, you can directly learn Java. There is no requirement to learn C or C++ prior to that. 
Similarly, Python is a standalone language. You can directly learn that language. In fact, many of the universities in the southern part of India, as well as a lot of universities abroad in the States, are teaching Python directly to their first semester students. So it's a great programming language and you can directly get started with that. No prior programming experience is required. The next one is more even interesting than this. It says, once after learning Python, would that be sufficient to get a job in companies or do we need to learn any other supporting language? Now, it's a little bit harsh reality and truth, but no, you won't get a job just by learning Python. Yes, there are hundreds of jobs in Python, thousands and millions of jobs in Python uh, that you can grab, but just learning with the syntax of a language, it won't be enough. Now, I'm not saying you have to learn other supportive languages for that. No, it's not required. But what I'm trying to say here is do a lot of projects. Projects may be dependent on machine learning, maybe, maybe scrapping of the web, maybe Django based project, maybe just scripting automation of some task, whatever that project might be. Uh, you need to get your hands dirty with some of the project. Just learning the syntax, how the loop work, how the function works, uh, things are not going to be good for you. So focus quite a lot on the project. Now this question has been thrown to me quite a number of times. Hey, suggest us some project. We want to do some project. Now here's the point. Nobody is going to give you or suggest you any projects just like that. You have to think up on your own that what can we do with that. Maybe you want to design an algorithm or a simple script that can scrap uh, emails from a web page or something like that. So go ahead, uh, think out yourself. You have to take this hard step. I know at first it's not easier, easier to think around that what we should be building up. Uh, we have no idea completely blank like that. But as a programmer, you need to be a little creative and have to think about what kind of project you can do and you have to do them project. Nobody's going to come up to you saying that, hey, this is a demo project you can do. No, that doesn't happen, at least not in the usual case. I'm not talking about the boot camps where we come up uh, with some kind of a funny experiment uh, with projects and we do those projects along with you. But in the usual real case, uh, when you are learning on your own, it's something that you have to manage up on your own. And finally, uh, the most interesting question is, does Python programmer has career in future? Let's just say for at least seven to 10 years. Uh, now I can understand your fear of you just want to stuck around with one language and want to just be completely re reliable on that. Unfortunately, it's an IT industry. It's a technological world. It is being changed every few months and you cannot be dependent on one language. Rather, you can focus on learning the syntax of a programming language, how the loop work, how the function works, how the classes work, and that should be your main goal. Python is just a tool, which is really a good tool uh, to solve your work. If you think that for seven years or 10 years, you can just rely on one technology, perhaps, perhaps you might be lucky enough to get around uh, with just one tech. But again, if you want to move on, if you want to grow with more salaries and more stuff, you have to have a lot of programming language and a lot of skills in your bag. Again, for seven years or 10 years, it's a big time. Perhaps, perhaps the technology might stay around for that much long. But I would say that this is, this is not something that I can answer. I'm not good enough to answer that because I cannot see the future there. I'm, I'm not sure whether uh, I'll be staying in India or Paris or London, where I'll be staying in the next seven years. I'm not sure for that. So perhaps I'm not a good person to answer what will happen in the next seven years. Perhaps somebody else, but at least not me. So very interesting email. I enjoyed quite a lot answering these questions as they have been asked quite a lot in number of other emails as well. I have enjoyed it thoroughly. I hope you have enjoyed this uh, particular video as well. And in case you are new to this channel, go ahead, do hit the subscribe button. And in case you want to join me up on every Sunday live, you can also hit that bell icon so that you get notification whenever I come live or upload a new video. With that, do hit that subscribe button in case you like this video. Make sure you hit the like button and I would also like to know on which programming language are you currently working on. I read all of the comments so make sure you hit the comment down section and write up your programming language that you are working as of now. I'll surely catch you up in the next video.